Hi guys, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com. I'm just here in Adobe Photoshop. This is an impromptu uh, image processing tutorial, although it's more of a kind of a discovery session, if you will. Um, I was planning on recording a podcast with Steve from Ontario Telescope and Accessories this morning, but the dump truck came in with a load of gravel for his new observatory, so he had to run off, which is uh, kind of funny and exciting for Steve. But figured since uh, I've got everything set up here in the microphone and Photoshop, um, I will just share some recent findings with the Hypercam 183C. I know a number of you uh, bought that camera under my um, advice, so I feel the need to um, make sure you guys are taken care of and, and you're using it well and getting the most out of it. And recently, um, I discovered something uh, not so surprising only because these are things that I was told right from the beginning that this camera sensor excelled with short exposures rather than long ones and for me that was a little bit hard to swallow because all the best images ever were taken using long exposures two three minutes five minutes ten minutes so I just didn't think it was possible to create a, a good deep sky photo using 30 second exposures I mean why even why even bother with auto guiding at that point? But I thought I'd try it out. So this photo is of this is the the raw stacked image of the bubble nebula, a very faint object. These are thirty second exposures, and it's just over an hour's worth of uh, imaging time. So an hour worth of thirty second exposures. I would never normally shoot a target like this, like that, like this, like that. So as you can see, look at the levels here. All the data is right at the very bottom. And that's exactly what I saw when I was shooting this uh, on Astrophotography Tool. But I thought to myself, okay, you can't tell in this little tiny histogram, but in the, in the larger one in APT, I could see that the data was not being clipped off on the left-hand side and uh, the peak w was there. Um, so no data was lost. I knew it was in there. I just need to pull it out. So you know what, I'll keep firing away. So we'll make our first adjustment here to get a better look at uh, the, the target. And you can see a very faint bubble nebula in there. And of course, I'm shooting under extremely light polluted skies, as you know. Uh, and there's a green tinge to this image, which is very um, typical of images with the Hypercam 183C. And that is because of the RGGB Bayer pattern. There's two Gs in there, if you heard that correctly. So that needs to be balanced out later. But you can see the bubble in there, and more importantly, the sky is looking very smooth at this point. So let's do the next step of uh, converting it to a 16-bit image uh, to get those uh, more adjustment controls. You don't want to use the default preset. Um, sorry, you want to use the exposure in gamma method here, which is falls under the custom category. And at this point, the levels is going to change, and you can see the RGB. Uh, separated there. So we're going to bring this into the bottom here because there's no data below that. And then I'm going to do a, just a small curves adjustment. Just pull that up a little bit before I make a quick color balance. Again, still very green, but that's because you can see the RGB uh, levels are not matching up right now. So the quickest way to do that Kind of an exciting time because you see the real color of your image. You choose a, a, an area of sky that is just dark black sky without any nebulosity. And when you do this, you want to make sure you don't you're not accidentally picking up a spot where there is a dust cloud or nebulosity to do this. I'm pretty confident that this is just a blank area of sky right here. I've got the set gray set gray point eyedropper, and I'm just going to click it right here. And now we've got more of the actual colors because we've balanced the RGB. There's the bubble there. So at this point, what do you guys think? The guys that shoot longer exposures, are you uh, impressed at the amount of detail uh, of this image using only 30 second exposures in an hour um, from a light polluted skies? From light polluted sky backyard? Uh, I certainly am. Coming from uh, what I used to see out of the DSLR, shooting um, three hours worth of three-minute subs, 
I can tell you this, there wasn't a whole lot more of the nebulosity before a stretch, and the sky was not this smooth. You're just starting to see a little bit of noise now, but I mean that, if I doubled up on this and got two hours worth, it could be a lot better. So this is the power of the 183C and that internal cooling fan. This was a warm night, but that, oh God, Steve's calling me back now. Okay, hold on guys, I will have to come back. Okay, just finished recording uh, today's podcast, but uh, I just wanted to finish this up real quick. So I believe my point is made about the shorter exposures with the 183C, and I'm not sure if I mentioned or not, the gain setting was 60%. The man manufacturer of this camera recommended that I not go past um, two-thirds of the, the full gain setting, so that's where I'm at, 60%. So the next step here would be um, gradient exterminator. I can see a bit of uh, glow here. And I am not gonna balance the background color, leave it on medium and low. As you can see, it was just a subtle balance there. I'm gonna take a look at the levels again. And now we're gonna do our big stretch. And why don't I just control click some faint nebulosity control click the background sky plot those points and now I'm gonna pull the nebulosity side up as you can see the objects starting to come out there and I'm gonna make my final edits here including running some of the astronomy tools actions and then I'll share the final image at the end of the video so hopefully you guys, uh, owners of 183C Hypercams, uh, got a little something out of this. Cheers, guys.